Campaign 2018 is underway in the race in the House of Delegates in District 29C. Uh, Pitts Democrat uh, Julia Nichols against Republican Jerry Clark. Clark is the incumbent in that seat. He uh, was appointed by uh, Governor Hogan to fill the unexpired term of uh, Delegate Tony O'Donnell, who was appointed to the Public Service Commission. Jerry, good to have you with us uh, today. Thank you, Marty. It's good to be here. Um, that was quite a process uh, of getting appointed to the uh, uh, House of Delegates. Uh, tell us a little bit about how that came about. Well, it was a fast, fr fairly fast-moving process. Uh, I believe it was in the uh, August time frame when uh, Tony officially resigned to uh, move up to the Board of Public Works, and uh, the actually the process couldn't start until Tony officially resigned. So once uh, he resigned, uh, the governor's appointment office asked both central committees in Calvert and St. Mary's County to do the process of interviewing uh, uh, applicants and uh, sending up three names from each county, three from St. Mary's and three from Calvert. Uh, so uh, over a period of uh, three or four weeks through interviews and in forums and and questionnaires. Uh, quite a few people applied and uh, the numbers were uh, whittled down to where there was three names that were sent up by St. Mary's County and three names by Calvert. And I was fortunate enough to be on the list for Calvert County. And a week or two later, one morning, I got a phone call from the governor after having uh, been vetted by uh, the appointments office in Annapolis. There was quite a few of us that were, or six of us that were vetted, and the governor asked me if I would uh, uh, consider uh, filling Tony's spot, of which uh, I obviously uh, agreed to do, and uh, felt very honored that uh, he would have picked me to uh, to uh, continue on in Tony's tradition of 22 years that he served there, and uh, one of the uh, things that I did say that uh, I would uh, also run for re-election uh, after the two-year uh, appointment was over with. Okay. Um, when you got to Annapolis, did you find your experience of 12 years as a county commissioner to be beneficial? Well, most definitely. I, I, you know, I had spent uh, 12 years on the Board of County Commissioners in Calvert County. Uh, I had had uh, a lot of workings at state level uh, issues with Delegate O'Donnell and, um, and um, the uh, delegates from uh, St. Mary's and the senators from Calvert and St. Mary's County over the years and had a fairly reasonable idea of how the process worked. Uh, my ideas weren't exactly 100% proven right because it is a lot different mm -hmm. uh, working up there as opposed to being a local uh, commissioner in uh, going up there to try to achieve things for your local uh, jurisdiction. Okay. Well, the next uh, uh, crop of uh, legislators from the Senate and the House will have to deal with a lot of uh, uh, issues in Annapolis come January. What do you think the big economic issues uh, will be in Annapolis next year? Well, obviously, uh, the biggest uh, economic issue, I believe, uh, going forward for uh, the legislature and for the uh, new administration will be to continue to create jobs and place Maryland in a better position to uh, entice uh, uh, businesses to Maryland. Uh, after a period of time where we had 43 tax increases and, and uh, numerous regulations that were put in place that hurt uh, businesses and um, did away with jobs, the last four years, uh, the the legislature and the administration were able to uh, cut back on that and uh, make it a lot better place in Maryland to uh, to do business. Uh, and when you say that, some people say, well, uh, you know, large corporations and, and things like uh, the Amazons of the world uh, are, are rich companies and they can afford to do this or that. But a lot of the uh, regulations that were put in place by the previous administration hurt small mom and pop businesses. And uh, that's my concern, is the small local mom and pop businesses that are struggling to thrive under all the restrictive uh, uh, 
ordinances that were put in place. Uh, when you start talking about paid sick leave, it's pretty hard for small, uh, when I say small, I'm talking, you know, what, 15, 20 employee operations to be able to afford to pay uh, the benefits and things that the state has started to require. Uh, I'm a firm believer that when you're in business, it's you and your employees and you work with your employees and the longevity of your employees is based on how you run your business and how you treat your employees. Um, this idea that the government, whether it's state or federal government, has a responsibility to come in and dictate to you that on uh, leave and uh, paid sick leave and uh, high minimum wages is it, just not uh, something that makes it uh, makes it available so that small business people, small mom and pop business people, the people in your shopping centers, in your strip centers, can continue to make a profit and be there. And trust me, if you don't make a profit, you can't pay a wage. Uh, so uh, I look forward to uh, continuing to work to try to uh, advocate for small mom and pop businesses, um, medium sized uh, regional franchise and National franchises and issues like that, they're very important also, but my heart lies in taking care and helping the small local business people that have, uh, are being struggled and strangled out of business in, in Southern Maryland. And uh, we need to, they need a strong advocate. And I think I have the uh, ability after 42 years, 40 years, actually it's 42, I'm, I'm aging myself here. Uh, of being a small, independent, self-employed business person. Okay. Is our region getting an adequate share of transportation funding? And if not, what can be done to change that during the next four years? Well, I think that, you know, are we getting enough? The simple answer to that is, would always be no. But are we getting more than we used to? The answer to that is yes. Uh, back four years ago or six years ago, uh, most people know that we, all the local jurisdictions, the counties and the municipalities all lost their highway user funds. And a lot of people say, well, what's highway user funds, you know? But uh, in, in some of the counties, I know in Calvert County, we were getting six, seven million dollars. And um, due to uh, some of the actions of the the supermajority in Annapolis uh, in the previous administration, that went down to about 700,000. Now, how does that affect the, the citizens? What that does is that cuts back on the amount of money that the local jurisdictions in Calvary and St. Mary's County has to overlay their roads and resurface their roads. It also affects small communities that uh, are private communities that have special tax districts because by having a special tax district, they have the ability to, uh, to get some uh, highway user funds, which help them keep the cost of their special tax districts a little bit lower and help them to uh, improve their private roads and their development. So uh, the, the quick answer to that is no, we're not getting enough, but I gotta tell you, the last four years, we've gotten more than um, we had the uh, previous four years. And the reason for that is I think that our current governor has realized that the rural areas are important to the state, just as the, the suburban areas. And uh, we've seen some projects in Southern Maryland here in St. Mary's County and in Calvert County that have been on the, uh, the wish list for quite a while start to come to fruition and, and get them done. There's still plenty more to do. Uh, there's only so much money to go around. Uh, obviously, um, the last session of the legislature, we, uh, a bill was passed, of which I did not vote for. They had mandated a tremendous amount of the transportation uh, trust fund money go to, uh, to uh, the uh, metro system in, uh, up around Washington. And, uh, um, you know, I understand the, the idea of mass transit and, and uh, the need to keep it going. Uh, but we have to look out for the people of the rural parts of Maryland also. And uh, that's part of my agenda is to see that we continue to get our fair share and get uh, the projects we need to get done. Obviously, projects like the Thomas Johnson Bridge is, uh, is very important to this region with the amount of traffic and the roads that lead up to it. 
which do you do first? Do you, uh, do you build a new bridge and then later build the ro redo the roads that come up to it? Or do you redo the roads that come up, that feed into the Thomas Johnson Bridge and then do the bridge afterwards? Uh, the idea that we would do both at the same time is probably pretty uh, wishful thinking due to the simple fact of the cost of the, uh, the whole project as a whole. So uh, we were able to get uh, the governor stepped up and um, got, has got the Harry Nice Bridge moving. Uh, for the people of Calvert and St. Mary's County, you may think that's not a big project, but uh, the Harry Nice Bridge is 70 some years old and it's, it, it's a toll bridge. So therefore, by being a toll bridge, it's paid for with the tolls uh, with transportation uh, authority as opposed to money out of the general fund. So it's, a, it's a, gonna be a good project and it'll help the whole region. But uh, we gotta keep our eyes focused on the number one regional transportation uh, project in Southern Maryland, and that's the Thomas Johnson Bridge. Summarize why you're seeking election to a full term and why the residents of District 29C should vote for you. Well, I, I, the reason I'm seeking in the, uh, well, uh, this term coming up is uh, having been in um, local government for as long as I was uh, and then appointed to the, uh, the state level seat. Uh, I've learned a lot over the years and understand how the, the system works. But uh, mainly, I spent the first... Uh, third of my life for better uh, building my businesses. Uh, I started out in uh, uh, Prince Frederick in 1977. Uh, Marty remembers that well, I'm sure. Oh. And um, oh. was there for a while and went to Solomon's for my second business in 1979. Uh, over them years, I've uh, had as many as uh, five or six businesses operating at one time. I understand payroll. I understand employees, I understand employees' benefits, uh, and uh, I'd like to think that I understand the world. The second uh, third of that time uh, I spent running them businesses and trying to help my employees and help them uh, make a living and, and also to help myself do better and my family do better. Uh, my whole family's involved, my brother and my sister. Uh, that are involved in, in my businesses with me on a daily basis. The last third of my life, uh, I made a decision when I got into local politics, and the reason I did that was because I seen all the things that uh, the government was actually doing to uh, the citizens of their county and the directions that things were going, some of them good, some of them bad. So rather than just sit back and criticize and... Uh, be the, the squeaky wheel of the group, I decided that I would put myself out there and um, try to be part of that. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, I'm doing it because I want to give back to the community and things like that. Obviously, that's part of it. But uh, I wanted to put some of my, my knowledge and my forethought out there to uh, possibly work with other people to make uh, the way of life in, in Calvert and St. Mary's County uh, a, a great way of life and a, a tremendous and enjoyable place to live. As far as running for a delegate again, uh, I enjoy it. Uh, I think I, I do a good job at it. I approach the issues with common sense as opposed to any real big uh, agenda one way or the other to the left or the right. And uh, I think I have the, the great ability to work with uh, both uh, sides of the aisle. Uh, Although I got to tell you, it's pretty tough up in Annapolis when you have a, uh, a super majority on one side, uh, they don't need you. And um, sometimes they accept your opinion and, and, and let you voice your opinion and, and take it into consideration. Sometimes you, it, that just gets closed off really quick. So that's why it's important that we continue to, uh, to try to equalize the, uh, the party system in Annapolis and elect more uh, Republicans so we can balance out the legislature. And uh, I think by doing that, we'll get a lot better, uh, uh, a lot better success from, uh, uh, from Annapolis, and it'll be better for all the citizens of, of Maryland and uh, not just uh, a, a one-sided, uh, one-party rule. So. That's why I, I'm continuing to uh, 
to go forward uh, and uh, I'm always available to the citizens uh, who have issues uh, they all most all of them know where to find me and uh, or how to get a hold of me because I'm out in the public on a daily basis so uh, Marty uh, that would pretty much be the the reason that I, I, I think that uh, I can be successful again in uh, moving forward okay Jerry Clark, he's running for a full four-year term in District 29C, House of Delegates. We remind uh, all of our viewers that uh, Election Day is coming up in early November. There'll be early voting. Be sure you exercise your franchise and go to the polls. Again, our thanks to Delegate Jerry Clark for being our guest today. For TheBaynet.com, I'm Marty Madden.